is it. You're listening to Ala Nui Mele on PBS Hawaii. Yo, this is May So, and you're listening to Ala Nui Mele on PBS Hawaii. Peace. Listen up, this is Danny One, and you're listening to Hawaii Hip Hop History via Ala Nui Mele on PBS Hawaii. Check it out. His voice has to be one of the most iconic on Hawaii's radio waves. Clean, punctual, and soulful. When live on the air, you could hear or even feel the passion for music just oozing out of your speakers. Back when I-94 was ruling the airwaves, he was king. A master of the mix, regardless of if it's digital or on wax. His omnipotent potential had him, at one point, on the radio, DJing, and owning a club. I mean, shoot. Come on now. He started an outreach program for the youth to learn how to DJ, produce, promote, and organize events. His students are still, to this day, making moves in the industry. A man of many words and a fellow vinyl junkie, Hawaii's Barry White, James Cole. Wow. Hawaii's Barry White? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, now man. That's funny. Your voice, dude. Like, seriously. Let me, let me get low. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, before I met you and I just listened, I was like, this guy got to be a brother. Did you, I'm sure you got that a lot. It still happens today. I take it as a compliment. Hey, that's a hundred percent compliment. And then when I met you, I'm like, wait, he's not black. <laughs> I was like, but, oh, he's from the Bay. Okay, I get it. I get it. He's originally from the Bay. From yeah, the Bay. Yeah, yeah. So when you're in the Bay, um, what made you move from the Bay to Hawaii? It was, um, you know, it was by choice. It was quite, quite, uh, quite interesting. Well, when I first moved here, it was uh, when I first got here. I just came here on a visit because my dad, my dad, uh separated and all that kind of stuff he moved to Hawaii I'm like Hawaii anyway so I come over here and hang out for a couple of months and I go back and uh, you know I'm 13 so you know I'm starting to act up a little bit yeah but I got dad's not here to you know right, hold right, it down right, yeah, so I was yeah. you know driving my mother crazy oh, let's I just bet, say that so um I was all you know I was all into all kinds of craziness you know I was already selling drugs and you know just he, you're Mob in Hawaii, in, I mean, Hawaii I, or in, in San Francisco? Francisco. Right. I was just, I was a fool. I was on that track to be a fool. Right. And um, my mom one day said, keep acting a fool. Because the cops, I think the cops dropped me home one too many times. And she was like, keep acting a fool. I'm going to send it to your dad. In my brain, I was like, <laughs> that's all you needed to say. Yeah, let's so go. So I, I got into some more trouble. Cops right. brought me home. And I looked up at the stairs. She says, your bag's packed. Wow. And uh, she put me on the airplane and uh, called my dad while I was on the airplane and said, you might want to be at the airport in six hours because your son is on the way. Oh, wow. And that's how I got to Hawaii. But she sent you to Hawaii. Yeah, to be where I'm dead because right, right. he was the only one that's going to be able to mm, handle me. Right, right. He's right. the only one I respected. Right, right, right. I'm 13, yeah. you know, and, and a punk. And back then, you weren't DJing at all? Not you even a little bit. Anything. Not Just even a little bit. I streets. was, I was, they weren't even mixtapes, but I was recording all my favorite songs to cassettes. Right. And that's a whole other cool story. But so, like, pause mixes at all? Not or? even a pause mix, just. Just, I like this song. just recording. I like this song. Boom, right. boom, boom, boom. And uh, when I first got here, uh, that was kind of my saving grace because I went to. I remember I got went to Washington Intermediate, okay. and uh, you know I walk on the campus with a box. Mm, nice. You know, and they're like, "What is this oh. music?" I'm like, "What are you talking about? You're what is this like music?" A, they're you're like, like alien. You're I'm like, like alien. "How do you not know funk? How do you right. not know flashlight? How do you not know Parliament Funkadelic?" Nah, I mean, yeah. So that was kind of a ooh. So when you walked there, you're like, hey, I got something right here. Like you already, you already sensed like it. it. You already I sensed was already it. I, I started selling those tapes for ten dollars a pop. Dang, back then, back ten then, bones at for... thirteen. I would make a hundred dollars a week easy. What? My my number one customer, you'll know. D mother D. <laughs> nice. <laughs> he was my number one no customer. Ways. Promise, I promise. You ask him anything. What, dude? This is crazy. <laughs> but anyways, crazy. go on. <laughs> Wait, so so you it wasn't even a mix. It was just wasn't even a mix. It was just recorded. Music well, I mean, the very first, very first one. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, eventually, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I ended up. Um, so that was thirteen. What year was that, roughly? Eighty. Eighty. Okay. Yeah. And you, you didn't even start DJing yet. Uh. Uh-uh. So what was your, what was your, uh, what was your first experience with like hip hop, like in general? Or you're, you're, you're pre- technically right at the, the birth of it. So there was no real hip hop, technically, right? I love saying this, and I always get this from Cool Herc when I met him. He's like, we made it, and they named it. Mm. Because it wasn't called hip hop, right, it right. was just called rap music. Yeah, you know, um, my first. I'm glad you asked that question because I was thinking about it in bed last night. Let's go. You know, my first one when I came here to Hawaii um, on a vacation. I can't even make this up. My dad picks me and my sister up from the airport. Okay. My dad was crazy back in those days, and we're not going to get into that. Your dad owned clubs too, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's one of the inklings. Okay. It's it, that that 
let's get back to that later on. Um, so he dro- he picks us up at the airport, and the first thing he does is drops me and my sister off at the point after. He what? goes, he goes, there's a teen, there's a teen party going on here from from six to nine. I'll come back at nine. Go party. So me and my sister, <laughs> I'm like, you know, we kind of walk in. And I'm not, and I don't know what to expect. And da, da, da. Awesome. anyway, so we're, we're 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 you know we're walking around. I'm listening, and I I hear this rap song. Yeah. Can't make it up. I hear this rap song, and I'm like, "Whoa, what is that? It's rapping. I've never heard rap before. I, what, what is that?" So did you even know it was rapping? I just heard somebody. I don't, it was, somebody was rhyming. Rhyming. Yeah, somebody was yeah, rhyming. Yeah. It was, and I remember going up to um to the DJ, and that was the, the late DJ? great um, DJ Tony Macacau. Um, and I walked up to him, and I was like, "What is this?" And I'm just a little kid. He pulls up the record. Fatback band, King Tim the Third. Wow, fat and I'm back. already, I'm already a fan of Fatback, and I'm like, they're, they're rhyming. What? Anyways, that was, uh, I was in. I was like, whoa, that was a game what changer, is that? right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I was bugged out, and th- and that was on a vacation. So when I go back, okay, to sa- to back to San Francisco, I lived in San Francisco on Mango Street, and there was a band playing at some. There were practicing and all of a sudden they're singing good times and then they, they rolled into you know hip hop and all yeah, that yeah. they started rapping i was like that sounded like that other song he's the rap wait a minute good times i remember rushing home oh and i searched my good times cassette yeah, yeah. did i miss something is there like another version that i didn't Not hear a break nothing right that was my that was my intro. Wow, that's crazy yeah. that, that was a live band you're that was a live band they were just they were just goofing around right and then <laughs> hip hop, yeah, yeah. and I was like, "What is that? I must have missed something on the cassette." Oh, wow. Not knowing that they're just, you know, they're just mi- riffing. Mi- they're mi- just, yeah, they're just ripping. Yeah, yeah. So that's insane. So then you moved to Hawaii. Then, and then six months later, I moved to Hawaii. And then you, so what was the thing that you're like, "Hey, man, I want to DJ." Was that like a happenstance, oh. or you felt that that pull, like I gotta, I gotta figure out how to get this music and. It, it, was, it, was a, it was it was it was a few little things. If I can just off the top, I think the very first thing was uh, one. I'll go back to my dad. My dad owned one of the biggest um, nightclubs in San Francisco, gay okay. nightclubs in yeah. San Francisco called um, Oil Can Harry. So every now and then he would take me. Oh, it's in the middle of the daytime, and I go inside the club. It's all dark. He says, "I'm just here to pick up some money." And da 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 da. And then I just we be roaming around. I always remember one day I was like, "Who is that?" He goes, "Oh, that's Grace Jones. She's going to be performing later what? on tonight." Anyway, so I, I I gallivant into the into the DJ booth, see all the records. I see two turntables. I'm like, oh, you're. I'm like, why why are, why are there two turntables? You know, yeah, I'm twelve. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I might have been I might have been ten. Right. You know, I was like, why are there two turntables? Oh, that's the DJ. He, he mixes. I go mixes. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Anyways, and then a couple of days later, he comes back with a cassette. He goes, Jimmy. Every, my family call me Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Listen, this is this is the DJ I'm telling you about. Listen. The songs change, and it doesn't stop. Stop, does it stop? And I always remember it was, I think it was like, oh, crank my... it up in some other song. Okay. It was cra- Anyways, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. So that was kind of an inkling. Right. You know, and, and plus my dad really well, enjoyed that. Well, you were like, that. yeah, it's like just through like well, not osmosis, you could say, but you know, you're around it. I was around it. I was and around And you already, it. it seemed like you already had that, 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 your, 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 your spirit was already Linked to funk and soul. Oh yeah, and I mean, music. come on, my dad, my mom, my parents had me when they were seventeen. Right, I mean, right. you know, in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm all around it. I'm, I mean, my right. mom's Motown, my dad's funk, and Izzy Brothers. You know, it's always on, always on, always. Right. On. Um, and then when I come here, and I got those cassettes. Yeah. And they're not mixed. It's just my favorite songs. Right. Right. And people but started that, that you recorded it from the bay. From the bay. And oh, okay. KPOO. So it was. I always remember my favorite station over there was KPOO and KSOL and KDIA. So I'd always go between right. those stations and, and record. Anyway, so when I finally got to, after I got kicked out of New Valley, <laughs> I got that didn't last even two months. Um, Into Washington. I had to go to Washington. Okay. And I remember I was. They were all like, "Woo." Wait, real quick. Was DMFD going to school Washington the same no, time? No, okay. he was in Kaneohe. He would take the bus, and I'd meet him at the bus stop every week. He says, "I don't care. You give me as many tapes as you got." What? That's Shots a whole. That's a whole. Other, dude, that's a whole other yeah, story. Wait, how did we? Real quick. How did you? How did you guys even meet? Probably the clubs, the team disco clubs. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and he would travel clubs. from Kanye yep. to meet you just yep. to get these yep. tapes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, 
that's a little early on. That's probably eighty two now, eighty three. I'm okay. talking right now. I'm 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 in eighty. Okay. <laughs> you know when I first moved here, right. and then um, you know Washington Intermediate. I always remember walking to school with my box, and you know when you're young, you know I'm half Mexican, right. I'm half Filipino, but I grew up with all the brothers. Yeah. And when you're thirteen, you're trying to figure out your identity. Exactly. So I walk in. I'm I'm in cholo mode. So I got my Ben Davidson's jacket oh, nice. on. I got my hair slicked okay, back. Okay. You know, I got my 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 my. my I, I, I oh got my the God. I got the garb on. Okay. I, let me guess. You, you stuck out like a sore thumb. Oh, girls loved it. Guys hated it. Ooh. Didn't care. I had my radio, and that was it. So because I had all this music, yeah. people started to gravitate me, and I thought that was kind of cool. It yeah. was it was getting me of over. Course. Yeah. You know. Um. So there's another inkling. Right. You know. Um. And I think I I remember now, I I moved back again. Okay. I moved back to San Francisco, and I did not want to go because I was starting to, mm, yeah. you know, get some traction here, yeah, yeah, just yeah, as definitely. part as having friends. Especially and, at that age too, where everybody's so impressionable. Yeah. And you're trying to find yourself. You're trying to find your tribe. You're trying to who exactly, are you? Exactly. You're this guy from the mainland. You look local, but you're not local. And you know you're Mexican, Filipino. So you're kind of here, but you're kind of not. But hey, wait a minute. I got this music and. This music can bring us together. This music can get me, girls, can get me to be like, okay, I'm not going to beat you up because I'm, I'm vibing All the everybody. above. All the above. So you moved back? So I moved back, and I was kicking. I didn't want to do it. Anyway, so now I'm a little – am I 14 now? Yeah, I'm 14. Wow. You live in and, life. And, yeah. So anyways, I get snuck into a club. These I always gravitated to the old cats, and I always remember I, – I remember, I remember I stole my dad's chain, and he had, he had a big ounce on it. You wore a chain. Because I wanted to look old. Right. And I always remember the guys took me when we went to the club off of Broadway called the Palladium. Okay. And uh, I got in. Wow. And I'm holding up that wall. But then I always remember listening to this DJ. And I was like, so rough, so tough. No, it wasn't so rough. It was heard it through the grapevine. Okay. The intro just kept on playing over and over. I was like, what version is that? And I can see him. He's, you know, he's manipulating the record. And I'm just like. That's not a version. That's dope. And I was living, you know, days go by, and then I'm I'm at the um, I'm in the lobby of the Fox Plaza, and a, uh, and some brother walks by me with playing so rough, so tough now, right. and the baby, baby part, baby, 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 baby. boom, ba- and it's kept yeah. on going, baby. I, was, I actually chased the dude. I was like, yo, 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 what version is that? He goes, that's my version. I'm oh, a DJ, and I was cool. like, oh, all right, then. and then he, and he walked on. Right, right, right. Anyways, um. Well, by that time, when you were asking these questions, were you trying to figure out? Were you, well, you were saying what version, but you didn't know that it was them actually. Had no clue. Yeah, so you're thinking, where did they get that version from? Exactly. And you're, you didn't know what that they were manipulating. Nope. Okay. Nope. And then I moved back to Hawaii, and uh, I think I remember I know what I want to do now. I want to be a DJ. Wow. You know, and uh, I remember going to my dad, you know, I'm. Young, 14 years old. I said, hey, I need some money. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, I know what I want to do in life. I said, I want to DJ. 14. 14. And he goes, so what do you need from me? I go, well, I need two turntables. And from what I'm hearing, I need two 1,200 Techniques turntables. <laughs> I'll buy the cheapest mixer available. Yeah. I've already looked yeah, at it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's $68 at Radio right, Shack. Right, right. Without the crossfader. It was right. just up and down. And then I, everything can plug into my JVC, so yeah. you don't need to buy me speakers. Right. He said, how much do you need? I said, I need $1,200. He goes, hmm, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. You, 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 you get six hundred dollars, and I'll match you. Nice. I'll say word. Only job I ever had in my life, real outside of music. I went to go work That's at crazy. Burger King on University. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Put that little net in my hair. Yeah. Flipped them burgers. Saved up uh, six hundred dollars. You were what? Fourteen? Yeah. Fifteen? Four, no, I'm fourteen. You hired at fourteen? Fourteen, bro. And then, um. What happens now? I save the six. Yeah. I take my net off, and I'm like, I'm out. I've got Oh, it was that quick? It was that. Well, it was about six months. Right, yeah, yeah. And then um, I went to my dad. I said, here's the money. Yeah. And was he was he surprised? He was like, no, nah, it was No, nah, he knew. He knew. Yeah, he already knew. Wow. Yeah, he didn't care how I got so it. He probably the... thought I was going to go out there and mug somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you guys get the text from? Where'd you guys buy techniques back um, then? You know what? I don't even remember. I mean, was I have Cherokee no around back then? No, yes. no, they were. Cherokee. As a matter of fact. Cherokee was around. They used to have them on display. Yeah, I mean, but I, I don't think go... we got it from there. I mean, my dad's a nightclub owner, right. so he, so you he know, had, he yeah, knew yeah. he knew cats. So you had two techniques and a realistic mixer. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And that's yeah. Like, that's and that's, that's kind of how it started. I'm kind of skipping. So when I move before I, I I know I need these turntables, I actually meet this guy at Kaiser. I ended okay. up going to Kaiser now. Right. And he was like, "Well, I got these two turntables at home, and he, if, if if and I know you're making all these tapes. If you come over to my house, right, and make your master, okay, oh, I want the first copy, and then you can use my turntables whenever right, you right, want. Right, right. He's not a DJ. He was just a spoiled cat with okay. all these toys. Yeah. So I would go over there every week and make mixes in here. So what did he do with that? He just wanted the first one. He just wanted the first one. Okay, I thought he, he, wanted, gonna... he wanted to drive around his Toyota bumping. I got this. I got this. I got I'm first. the first oh. one. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. So you already were you already making a name for yourself just like I don't in know. high school? Or... I don't know. No, were not you known really. as, well, Were you known as that guy? Like, oh, he's a DJ guy. Well, well yeah. yeah. By, by the time I'm 14, so Sillies was a teen disco that we all went okay. to. Who, who owned Sillies? Anyway? It was a, it was a, it was a Heine and some other cat. I wish I remembered his name. It was a Filipino cat, but it was two guys who owned it. Okay. And, the and location, I would. Where was the location? Right there on uh, Alawai and Macaulay. Okay. Yeah, on the, it was a tiny little club. I, it was the world to me, but I think three hundred people. It was jam packed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I lived two blocks away at the Wailana. Wow. So okay. I would be always first. At, I would sit there, and I had my little records. I'm not a DJ yet. I'm learning how. You'd I'm, bring your records. I would bring my records, that is and I awesome. would sit there Let's go. in the sun. <laughs> what? And then, um, So you'd wait for these teen nights to happen. i wait for the teen nights to happen. And then finally when the doors would open, I would go inside there, and I'd try to make friends with the DJ. Right, which was, was that uh, Tony Makakao? No, Tony okay. Makakao was uh, elsewhere. Um, the, when I first got there, it was Mike Taylor, Ahi, and Lisa D. And... Um, I think it was mainly Mike Taylor that was there in the beginning. Right, right, right. Um, he goes, so what are you doing with those records? I says, there's nobody here yet. I just want to hear them loud. Dude, I love it. Can you just play these it. loud? That's what's up. And he would, he would pop on my mouth. Oh, this sounds so good. This is way better than my radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go. <laughs> and then I would end up schooling him. Oh, like, okay. where'd you get this? I'm like, right. you know. This. Oh, because you you got, went back and forth from the Bay. Yeah, you got records yeah, that they yeah, don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you started doing that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let, okay, now we're talking about records. So one day, because I am from San Francisco, I would always go to the Castro because right. we had a lot of family there. And then one day I'll be wandering around, and I always remember this record store called Aloha Records. Okay. And I used to go upside there and see all these records with one song on it. Right. The hell is this? The twelve inch. I had no idea. Anyways, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would go there all the time and steal records and yeah. all of that. Switch then, labels? Did you, did you switch labels? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I would just shove them down with spin oh, back then. So stealing. I would shove them down. Oh, I would steal them. I'd be gone. Oh. Anyways, um, so when I got to Hawaii, I would always, you know, I gravitated to the uh, to the to the gay district yeah. where Hula's is and eighty percent right. straight and all of that. And I end up wandering into the back, and I'm like, a record store. The beat record, right? Yeah. So I walk up beside there, Is and that the one on Cuhill. Yeah, you gotta go. Th- you got a eighty percent. Yeah, yeah, front? yeah. It was right underneath, right yeah, underneath. Yeah, yeah. And Kevin Okada, I will always give him the credit. Yeah, Kevin Okada, Kevin. we became friends, and he's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm just, I, I love music." He goes, "Oh," then we come friends. I'm like, "What?" So well, the two turntables. He goes, "Oh, I'm mixing," and, and now I'm kind of putting it together. I'm like, right. "Oh, that's what those dudes are doing." He goes, you want to learn how to mix? I go, yeah. He goes, you got turn two turns? I go, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing, though. Wow. Here, listen to my tape. I just thought, hey, it didn't, it didn't stop. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> Biggest train wreck. He, and, and then, you know, time goes by, and we we become friends, and he sees that I'm serious. He says, well, if you're serious, you know, I, 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 you just need to learn how to count. Nice. I'm like, I know how to count. He goes, no, you got to learn how to count phrases. Mm. You have to learn how to make the. Right. I'm like, what? Anyway, so he, sh- he, he listen to his arm. Everything's in 32s. Everything's in these right. little bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See how it changes? See how it crescendos? See how it does that? I was like, yeah. He goes, it doesn't matter what kind of music. Yeah. Any kind of music is all little phrases. Right. Whoa. Dad, turn the radio on. Watch. Five, six, seven, eight. See how it changes? I mean, <laughs> change, change the radio. Listen to this rock song. Five, six, seven, eight. See how it changes? Like oh, this you, is great. Like a bit of a new Dude, I was, in I, your was, brain. I was bugged all the way out. Every song. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head. Yeah. So finally, now so he's Kevin like, is the one that actually introduced you or taught you how to mix. Yes, he told me how to phrase. Right. He, you know, he didn't actually. I didn't actually get behind there, and he showed me how to put right. the needle on the end, and then I know all that. No, I had to go home and figure yeah. that out. He was telling you one and two. Yeah, yeah, two, yeah. So you know, it was hard. Like, 
Yeah. One, two, one, three. Two, oh, 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 where yeah. is it? And, yeah, 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 trying yeah. to find the beat. That was the hardest thing right. about mixing. It is, it is hard. The yeah. hardest part. Um, but once you get it, it's like a you know. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm so all over. I'm all over the place with my head right now. So, so you go to the beat. Can you be Kevin would be there? Yeah. Okay, so now now I'm learning. Now I'm learning. Then I meet. Then I meet a friend. Uh, my great friend uh, Montez Brown. Okay. Um, he's from Chicago. And he's learning how to DJ too. So we would go to my house and we would practice every day. We would cut school just to practice. I knew my dad would sleep all day. My turntables were at his bar. Oh. I'd break into my dad's bar and 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 we would practice. Because I knew he wasn't going to be there till at least right, noon. He's sleeping. Yeah, because he's sleeping. So I'd practice, 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 and then close it all up, go to school, have lunch, come back, practice. He I mean, knew though, he knew. I don't know. I don't know. You know, as you get older, I confess. Yeah. 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 I don't confess till after I was 40, but you know. Right, right, right. But I always remember when me and uh, Montez were practicing, um, we were trying to figure out. We were trying to figure out how do these guys mix so fast and get it so fast. And we ended up seeing Keith Jacobson, the one of the best DJs ever Hawaii has ever seen early Where on. Where did he spin at? He spun a hula's and the wave, and um, we would just sit there and watch him. And I'd be like, "Whoa, I get it." He's he's like, "What? Watch him." He's like, what? I'm talking to my friend Tiz. He's not touching the turntable. Everything's in the pitch. That's how they're doing it fast. Uh, okay. You're not going, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Ooh, let's try to find the beat. Da, yeah, da, da, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. let's start over again. Ooh, blah, blah. No, it's five, six, seven, eight, pop, poop. I'm in the mix. Let's go. I was like, that's what we have to do. So we went back home. Now we're practicing. <laughs> and, I, it, and we're so used to, you know, right. per, doing catch, this. Trying to catch that. I, I remember. I Hide my hand behind my back with my belt, six, seven, eight, just so I wouldn't touch the, the side. It was always the pitch. Once I got that, it was over. Yeah, done. Because I mean, the fader was just there. It was just yeah, because you're riding the you're riding the, you're riding. I'm, the beat. I'm, I'm riding it. But that pitch. Yeah, and I'm getting right. ahead of myself again because you know I got a lot of people don't know this. In the beginning, all I did was battle. That's all I did. I, I went to the clubs. I wanted to eat you alive. I come and so I, just, I would just stand there and start going. <laughs> this is you know. So how did the battle? How did that battle? How did the battle? You would stand there with your records and be like, "Let me get on," or like, was it like a battle? They had DJ battles, or oh, they had DJ battles. But what I'm talking about what it was early on. You know, I was real cocky. Right. <laughs> so after you know, after I got good, and I oh, so let, let's go back. So sillies. Yeah. One day, the DJ doesn't show up. And Ricky Sugimoto, I always remember, he was a general manager. And Joe Mayo was the uh, promoter. And they go, they come to me and go, James, can you play? I go, what do you mean? Can, can you play? I was like, I'm still practicing, dude. I don't even you know. He's like, yeah, but you know all the music. I go, yeah. I was like, all right, come on, let's go. So I play. Let's go. And now, now, that's, now that's my job. Now I'm the head DJ for the what? team disco. Okay. For the team disco. Who was spinning it before? Was it uh, Mike Taylor? I, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somebody lost their job. Okay. And then, anyways, years go by now. It's probably eighty. So when did you, when did they, when did that happen? Eighty two. Hey, we need a DJ. That's eighty two. Eighty two. Yeah. And how old you? How old you? How old were you? Fourteen. You're fourteen maybe, years old. Maybe maybe fifteen by now. So you're fifteen, spinning at a legit nightclub for your peers. Yeah. And were, were your friends like bugging out? Like, yeah. yo, that's James. Everybody was bugging out. Like, yo, but man. but but nobody was surprised. Yeah, yeah, because you were already that guy. I was already that guy. I always right. had the music. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that goes on, and then you know. By the time I'm 16, the it's DJ crazy. doesn't show up at nine, and they're like, "Can you play till two? Oh, so it would so six to nine, or was it five to nine? Whatever. For it was team, they, right? They they'd kick everybody out. Alcohol, there'd be a line of in, yeah. And remember, back in those days, it was 18 to drink. Oh, dang, yeah. You know, which okay. they don't have no sense drink now that I'm a daddy. No, yeah. you don't. Mm. Yeah, nobody should be. Yeah. Should nobody should be drinking 18? Yeah. Only if you go into war. That that's about yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I always remember. Again, I lived right down the road, and I remember I called my dad. I said, "Yo." They want me to stay here till two. To do what? They want me to play. So they gonna pay you? I said, yeah, they're gonna me $150. Let's go. He says, okay, well, they they this is my dad, a club okay. owner. Yeah, definitely. They have to have everybody out by two. You're done by 130. You be home by 145. I was like, bet. I said, we on. Click. Somebody else lost their job. So you know, the fact that your dad was a club owner. Yeah. And wait, let's go back, rewind the fact that he dropped you and your sister off. At a club, off the plane. Hey, here you guys go. Go to this club, hang out, fight yep. some friends. Yep. I'm out. Peace. Yep. Pick you up at nine. Yep. Boom. Crazy, so, right? So nothing was new to you at that point. I mean, you're 16. I mean, it was kind of, but to a point, you're like, nah. This is. I just, 
I loved playing my music that I knew a lot of people didn't know. It was for me, yeah. the essence of me being a DJ was to educate. Right. I yeah. wanted to share. I mean, that's what a DJ is. Yeah, I just wanted to share. Here, here, right? here, here, here. Um, one note, I have to say this because you know, you're talking about the hip, hip the hip hop and all that. When I got to uh to, to 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 point after and I moved here and I would go back. Right. You know who I, I would see that always stuck out? And I didn't know them. I became friends with them okay. much later. Okay. Silver Lockers. Well, that's crazy. Steven Silva, yeah, Shelly yeah. Hussey, you know, all those Michael Drain. Yeah. Those were the cats. Those were the real hip hop cats before right. the breaking took over. Right, right, right. You know, you forget it's all locking. Locking. It's yeah. all locking still, yeah. yeah. Speedy talked about that. Yeah, it's all, all locking. locking. There was nobody break dancing yeah. yet. You know, and I always remember them. So when I'm coming up in the ranks and right. they're coming to the clubs, I'm like, yeah, man, nah, Well, nah. they were already silver lockers. Oh, they were already silver lockers. Dino, yeah, uh, yeah all of them. Jason and Steven Silva. Yeah, all of them. Dope. It's good times, good that's times. And, you, and that was, uh, so that's that, 80. So point, after, so point after, was it going at the same time as Silly's? Or kind of no, 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 no. Okay, no, no, so it's point no. after Silly's. Yeah, Silly's, uh, point, I think point after died off and then Silly's kind of took over. So you're telling me earlier, Silly's had a lot of, um, well, I guess it was locking, popping. Didn't it? You, so you've seen a transition from locking, popping, absolutely. break dancing. Absolutely, 100%. And you've yeah. seen the, the, the music was the same, though. You can still dance. Or it was more or less. It started to morph. It right. definitely started to morph. Because I mean, of, you got it hits different for popping and locking as breaking. Popping and locking was funk, right? You know, it was that was that was a lot yeah, of funk. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know after seventy nine eighty and rap, and rappers delight and, and King Tim the Third and all that, you know, then now, now you know hip hop is starting to, yeah, starting to you know kind of ooze, and um, the breaking. I mean, the breaking and popping thing, man. When that first came out, did that just come like boom? It like was a wave it was, or was it, it was, was no it, it was so gradual it was so gradual because we we would more and more rap records would come out mm, yeah. so we would start buying them and playing them and a lot of people a lot of the older mm, the, they weren't the, feeling the it. older the, the the younger what uh, the first guard yeah they were like mm, you know but you know I'm this young yeah shit, this is this shit. DJ, you know, we got yeah. to play all this and they were right. like stop playing that you know that black music it's all it's just gonna be a fad and, you know that whole right, you know yeah. all that cliche stuff um so you know all that music started to come out and certain people would gravitate to it and that was that scene okay you know and um I don't I just when we would walk around Waikiki now this is how ridiculous I was me and my crew we will walk through Waikiki with not one radio blasting. We'd have three. <laughs> okay? I'd have the main JVC, okay. have that output right. connected to the input of the other radio. No, you the didn't. output of this radio into no, that input. That did not happen. Bruh, what? I would walk down and I said, yo, don't go too far. Them, that, that, that line ain't, <laughs> it's going to unplug. And then who was at the end? There was always somebody at the end with a bag of D size batteries. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Oh God. And we would find our spot. And then back in the day, you know, Waikiki was crazy. Yeah, yeah. We would we would all, we would run into crews. Yeah. And we'd try to stay away because, you know, we didn't want our music to clash. And then finally we would lay down some linoleum or whatever and people start That's breaking insane. in. I've never heard anybody talk about like ox to ox for boom boxes. Bruh. Trust. It's my it's I, I always call That's I always like say next, this. That's next level. It's I, I call it my bocce. Because now that I'm fifty six years old. Right. When people drive by with the loud music, I want to shoot them in the head. <laughs> Will you turn it. What t- you know what time it is? Turn this stuff down. <laughs> uh, but like, I was that nitwit. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You're like I was that guy. Yeah, yeah, I was that guy. Okay, okay. Keep going. Yeah. Turn it down a little bit. <laughs> Just a little, please, please. I've gotten fired from nightclubs. People telling me to turn it down. They would come into. Pop. What are you doing? Don't. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't touch. Anyway, don't that, touch. That's over the thing. So, so I mean, what uh, do you remember? Any of the guys you seen? Uh, well. I like talking about like the transition between the, um, locking, popping, and breaking. easy peasy. So I told you that I was I I, I gravitated to um to um to the Silver Lockers. Yeah, uh, they were a huge influence on me, and I would always like to play music for them that made them yeah, move. Yeah, totally. And you know, there was all about you know I don't know if you guys remember it was called it was called strutting at first, yeah, right. it was strutting and boogaloo and all that and the locking. But then, you know, when it started to morph, I almost want to say. I almost want to say there was this cat named Baby Bloss okay. that came into town, and he did this like, I was right. He just this this tick, and everyone just freaked out like, what? what is that? You know, and it was was this at Silly's? No, this was 
You know, I don't even remember. Like this guy wasn't from here. He just, no, he just came and no, boom. no, 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 no. And I remember, I remember looking at this guy. I was like, he's gonna be a problem. Oh. Like, like meaning, like he's gonna be competition. Yeah, he's yeah, gonna start, yeah, he's, yeah. Taking, he's gonna start taking people's shine because the girls were going crazy, <laughs> you know. And that's really all we're concerned about. Exactly, girls yeah, yeah, and yeah. music. Right. Well, you know, that was it. Right. Um, but anyways, when I would watch, you know, um, you know, Michael Drain and uh, all of them, the Silver Lockers, I would see them start to do the pop. Yeah, yeah. And they would start to master that. Right, right, right. You know, and then one of my best friends to this day, Kona Fleming, he just was dope with the with with the whole mannequin thing. And, yeah. and then bits and pieces, Frankie okay. Ponymore and, and Mike, um, that was their cousins. So I would make tapes for them, you know, and they uh, it was just it just it was such a gradual thing. But I'll tell you what, I always remember this was Pinnacle. I don't remember what, what movie was it? Was it Breaking? Was that the first one? Breaking. Anyways, Breaking had come out, the right. movie. Okay. What year was that? I don't even know. But 84? Four. Huh? I was going to say four. Yeah, four? 83, 84. Four? I want to say 84. That's, that's my, yeah, yeah. That's not my final answer. Not, not five. No, 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 no. no. We're well on our way in 85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 84, I remember. We, we It was the opening, and everyone from, say, 80 to 84 that loved the, the rap music. Right. It was like a big opening. Everybody in the theater, we were all friends from the teen discos or whatever. We and we were there, and we were just like, "That's this is what we do. It's it's on the t- it's on the big screen. This is us." And that went pop. Everybody was on about it. Right. Then now they have popping conventions that yeah. there's Waikiki Shell. Right, right, that right. was unreal. Was talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Everybody danced to Planet Rock. I mean, you you almost got sick of Planet Rock that <laughs> single day right there. <laughs> I got sick of Planet Rock. Bro, that was 82. I didn't you find out about it until like 88. Dude, that was 82. Um anyways, so yeah, yeah. It was it was very, very gradual. So when did you start people when did you start seeing people go down to the floor? I know Silly's had B-Boy breaking, breaking nights. All day long. So, so what was, who's the first, like, can you, you recall who was like, hey, wait, they're not We standing. were doing, I just remember the down. cats, I remember cats doing it at, at, in high school. Okay. You know, so I'm at, I, you know, I'm in, I'm, I went to McKinley for the most part, and we'd be all in, uh, underneath the tree, and we would lay out that, you know, and, and the people would just start going. Yeah. You know, um, God, I can't tell you. Any, uh, any. Uh, the, the names that stick out are yeah. obvious. I right. mean, you know, the, you know, be, the. Wizard B Boys and ABC Breakers and Mechanical Masters. I mean, all of that, you know. And then they had that Breaking Hawaii thing. Yeah, with, yeah. God, that's what, what, year, it, what year was that? That was. God, I don't know, dude. Was that in '86? I don't know. I kind of shunned it. Right. I kind of shunned it because it was like, oh, y'all talk, y'all trying to take advantage of our stuff. Was that now. like the equivalent of when Red Bull first took on B Boying and like now the Olympics? You know, how like. It's it's maybe kind of sort of maybe kind of sort of you know monster sponsoring or like you know T-Mobile sponsors yeah 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 it could it could, it could have been it could have yeah, been yeah, because yeah. I mean I love Kamasami Kong but yeah. bro. Kamasami Khan was not in the trenches. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was not. Love, I love you, Kama. No, no. <laughs> Kong. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he wasn't in the trenches. Um, but it, you know, they made a lot of superstars in my head. I mean, know. it was on TV. I mean, TV was everything. Come there on, was no come internet. on, man. Yeah, and don't ever. You, okay, you it talk was radio about radio and TV. Now you see those people on TV. It was crazy. And don't, let's not forget, if we talk about the Hawaii hip hop. I mean, you know, there was another station that uh, really, really, uh, for me, I do believe, um, really, really um, fueled the fire. You know, right. that was that was Kisa. Okay. Um, Auntie Loki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then um, my man Johnny J Jam. Yeah. I was so jealous. Cause he got, he got a spot on it, and I was like, "How do I get on the radio?" You know, right, I'm over here in the club. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, when you hear that, Johnny like, J. Jam, he's man. still my dude. He's yeah, still my dude. Yeah. He's a little crazy, but uh, where's, he, where's he at right now? I think he lives in Tennessee, Tennessee or okay. Kentucky or something like that. And her yeah, Loki yeah. is. Uh, She's in L.A. Ve- L.A. No, Vegas. 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 Yeah, yeah. Rory Who's... Wilde surprised me the last time I was in Vegas. She she walked into the uh, walked into our hotel room. I. I I got emotional. Uh, you know what I mean? I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, <laughs> you know, it's just Anti Loki's right there. Yeah, so, so speak on Anti Loki because, I mean, as I've been doing my research, you know what I mean? Even before this podcast, I mean, I just, you know, wanted to know about Hawaii hip hop and where, who was the first, you know, asking around. That name would always pop up Anti Loki, Anti Loki. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, someone explain to me who Anti Loki is. So, Anti Loki, she, she, she was a radio personality on, on Kisa. And then um, I guess, I guess they, did some sort of promotions for the teen thing with Kisa because they were playing hip hop. Yeah, I'm thinking. I don't know. I'm guessing right now. Right. So, um, so she would 
she would come down and 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 host the battles. Okay. And that was kind of cool because like there was this DJ that we were heard and right. you know, to come yeah, down yeah, and she yeah. was an older lady and but you know it was like our mom she was like our aunt you know and, and they'd have and the guys would come out yeah Johnny J Jam he has a lot of it on tape okay he has a lot of it on VHS I think he posted some stuff yeah he on does YouTube. he does post okay. he does post um you I she, I I think I was in one of them I was like oh my god I had yeah, hair I think I seen you in the you're in dressed. the booth yeah yeah and I think I had a cigarette <laughs> hanging in my mouth I'm all a sixteen I mean you're you know. 16. Anyways, Auntie Loki, she was like, she was like the spokesperson, right? Okay, you know, um, what so she, to speak. What is, well, she was older, you said. Way older. So, well, did you ever talk to her why, how, why, or how she gravitated towards? No, I don't. I never music, have, never have. Subculture. I have never have. She was just always there. Wow. She was just always there, and then I think she started to branch out and do other things. And other other promoters started coming and started doing teen dances and throwing breakdance competition. But, and then the DJ thing started to come right. and come come into play. But she, you know, was, DJ the, she was radio, yeah, host, yeah. So that's what that's what made her her lore even like yeah. anti Loki, yeah, authority, yeah. yeah. And then when she grew, when, you know when she got together with um with Johnny because Johnny was such a charismatic um, personality. Right. Um, they kind of clicked really hard, really good. So, so was like the team. Kind of took, yeah, kind of took him under her wing, and right. that be kind of that kind of became a team. Wow. And um, so Johnny was more of a la popper locker, then radio host personality. DJ. He was he, he was a, he was a popper locker breakdancer. Yeah. Okay. He was he was good. Right. He was good. He should have never won that competition. But <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Johnny. But yeah. Come on now. No, 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 no. Hey man. <laughs> Charisma yeah. goes a long way. Oh, 100%. Charisma and, and showmanship, and let me tell you, the brother still has it. <laughs> yeah. So he was. He, so then he transitioned to radio. Did Anthony yeah. Loki get him on the radio? Yes, I'm pretty sure he did. And they had a show together, or two separate shows. Two separate shows. And they played all the the newest, all the newest and greatest stuff. I was so jealous. I remember one day, and I actually, I actually talked to him about this. Um, I think I was on Tantalus getting high or something, and <laughs> I'm listening to a show, seething, and I was like. This guy's genius. He left. He left the mic pod open, so it sounded like there was a party. You can hear them all talking, oh, no, 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 no. but the music was still loud. No, 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 no. no. I just thought, this is so dope. This is dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, 20, 30 years go by. I told him that. I go, man, that was genius, man. He goes, James, I can't even. I can't lie. He goes. The pod was broken. <laughs> I, I, I had no choice. So I was like, oh, man, you should have told me that. <laughs> You're like, this guy, geez, he's bringing a party to everybody yeah, on the radio. Yeah, I thought it was the dopest thing. <laughs> Feels like I'm right there. But nope. Hey, but you know, those things. I mean, that's how DJ started. You know what I mean? They, yep. they, they took the turntables. Hey, I could do this. Yep, yep, I'm yep. A freak, I'm going to change this mixer. Hey, I'm going go back and forth. So, I mean, what he was doing was nothing new in, in, in this whole sphere of hip-hop. Right, right, right. So is that, did you hearing Johnny J and Auntie Loki was like, man, I'm in the club every day spinning. I, want, I think I want to do this radio thing. No. I knew I wanted to be on the radio. I didn't want to talk. Right. I hated talking. <laughs> I never. So I, says the guy. I just claim to be. Bro, I very would never talk. If you, if you know my friends, when okay. they see me now, they're like, yeah. the what? guy that would never talk was afraid of the mic. I mean, I, I still am still kind of, right, I right. still kind of get nervous. But quick story, when they used to tell me for the adults, James, you got to talk. I'm not. I, yeah. But I'm kind of learning how to, you know, do my thing. So what I would do, I would take my, um, my four track Porta Studio. Nice. I would take the 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 the, the drink specials. Okay. And I would whatever. Um this is Thirsty Thursday, yeah, your yeah. tequila shot, whatever da 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 pause, write down the number. Okay, next the next one. Right. Um, you know, champagne on special, da da da. Next number. So when they told James and it was perfect every time. Talk about talk about that was the first voice track. What? <laughs> Wait, this is in the club. This is in the club because I didn't want to talk. I was so embarrassed. So I would I would pre-record it and I would just hit the button. That's it insane. It was perfect every time, bro. That's insane. <laughs> I got a task and This is eighty five. Portal one. Yep. This is eighty four, eighty five. <laughs> Easy peasy. I never heard anybody say that. Dude, I'm trying to tell you, if there was a way out, I was gonna find it. <laughs> so you had all these like, oh, talk about this, talk about that. <laughs> And you, you never, you never thought, you never wanted to, and and did people tell you, hey man, you got a good voice or what? The first time that happened, I, dude, I'm in my 30s, and I'm working, um, I'm working at, um, I'm working for Jamie Hyatt, and I do, I don't remember what station it was, but he had just pulled me aside one day. He's, 
what 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 I just started to think about this. Why haven't you had a show? I go, I don't feel I don't I don't talk. Yeah. He goes, but dude, your commercials are unreal and da 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 da. You got this great. If you just be you, right, you're gonna be good. I'm like, man, you know, I'm just not my thing. I'm not into that. He's, man, I want to put you on. I was like, my yeah, pass. But before that, you were all just mixing. Yeah, always mixing. DJing. Just mixing. When uh, so who gave you your first shot to get on the radio to spin live, mix, put mixes on the radio? The late great Kimo Akane. Oh, nice. Yep, I remember uh, my friend, which is crazy, John Ervolino. He uh. Just called me recently. John was a crazy New Yorker. He had seen me play in the club. He had watched me. I don't know. I was cutting something up. It was probably Shaka Khan or something. Right. And, and, oh no! It was what have you done for me lately? And I'm, I'm nice. messing the song up. And you know, I can remember when they had dubs yep. and acapellas, and I would do Freaking. all that. He was like, "Man, you gotta, you gotta do that, and you gotta put it on tape, and we gotta, we gotta put it, put it on radio." I was like, "Okay, whatever." Yeah. So I go upstairs. I practice, practice. Finally, okay, boom! This is perfect. And they, hey. let's explain to people. This has a one take thing. Oh, it there's was a no, one take thing. Oh my no, god. Oh, no dude. computers, dude. Straight to cassette. Oh, when I when I used to make my mix shows for I ninety four, yeah, you know, it would be a half hour, forty five minutes long. You remember those ninety minutes tapes? Oh, yeah. And I'd have a forty five, and I'd be perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm forty minutes into it, and I I, I train wreck. You're like, I gotta oh. record the whole thing over again. All oh, that used to bug me <laughs> this out. This is before dude. four track. This is before my four track. This is before I learned how to edit. It is Ooh. before anything. I didn't know about the. Yeah, the the the, the 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 razor blade and all that thing yet. You so you know? made the mix for you made the mix for them and then they played it. Yeah, so I made the mix for for they they played. Oh, that was the what you station, know what station was that, that? was ninety three FMQ. 93 FMQ and I remember hearing it and I just bug. Like, um, and they're playing it in high rotation. And then they asked me to do another remix. It was a uh, Rock Me Amadeus. I remember Rock Me Amadeus had all these different versions. Yeah. So I just kind of did a mashup of all of them yeah okay you know every, every verse it changed to the nice. each, you know that kind of thing and i think there was one more i don't remember but that kind of that kind of got my juices like ooh, hearing my stuff on the radio oh, is yeah. cool and i think jamie hyatt was also the program director so you weren't even on the radio no your mixes were on the radio did yeah. someone do the this is james cole in the mix or did someone do that for you the oh yeah that, no that was another highlight it was the there was a voice guy, my first sweeper I ever had, and everyone always remembers it. And they, you know, when they meet me for the first time, they always go, ha, 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 James Cole's in the mega, mega yeah, mix. Because yeah, yeah. that, that sweeper was so popular right, back then. Yeah. Well, it was all, we were the only station. Yeah. You know, we we, we kind of won by default. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, um, Bumper Morgan. Bumper Morgan. I wish I still had that sweeper dry because it was so just, he had the deepest, dopest and that voice. And that was some, not, not someone from here at all. No, no, no. He was from, he was from Texas. Or and something he just like did that. all the bumpers for every Yeah, yeah. He, he was a station right. voice guy. Um, so you don't have it. You don't have a raw. I think I have it on, on cassette, but not raw. How, so yeah. how important, let's, just, let's go to this real quick. How important back then was the mixtapes to like hip hop in general for music? You know, for the scene at the time, because I lived for that stuff. Yeah, but that didn't happen. Or was that later in the eighties? You know, the whole big mixtape thing. I, I always remember it being really popular in the nineties. Okay. You know, prior to that whole mixtape thing, yeah. that was just what we did. Right. And that's how you know, yo, you got that music. Who's got the latest music? You know, yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. that's how those tapes circulated. And that's also how we made side money. Yeah. You know, now I'm selling them for twenty. <laughs> you know, price has gone up a little bit. You know, and what you want them on that chrome tape? Oh, you know, oh, you, nice. you know, or you want them that normal? <laughs> you know, yeah. different price. You know, it's crazy. My sister went to school with Richiaki, and she would. She Richiaki with, is my dude. She was friends with him. Yeah. Okay, and she would bring home all the mixes free, right? Yep. So yep. tell me all those went missing. Yep. I was like listening to those joints all day long. And I mean, I eventually got to know Richie because. My sister and stuff, but I mean, I'm I got like, great stories with me and Richie. I was like, "Dang, dude!" I mean, I, and I was just like, "I gotta." And I mean, that's crazy when I think about it. Just talking to you, you know, that the mixtape and your mixtapes, you know, what I mean, and then later on mix CDs and everything. But I feel that's kind of a lost, a lost art to some extent. No, well, now it's all on the cloud. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I try to put stuff on my on mine all the time. But let me backtrack. So, in '85, I get fired from Sillies. Okay, and I think my whole life is going to end. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm depressed. How'd you get fired? I don't know. Just, you know, when I'm 17 at the time, I've got, you're God big, knows. You were bigger than the club. God only knows what I was doing. I mean, you know. Right. Um, and I remember um, one of my friends worked on a cruise ship, um, Kalani Garcia. And he's like, dude, before we go out, I just, I just got to go check in and da, da, da. He's just, come with me, come with me. So I, whatever. So there's this long line at the Siemens thing. And he goes, 
you should sign up. I said, sign up for what? He goes, they got they, they got nightclubs on the on the cruise ship. I was like, no, they don't. No. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, DJ. I'm just killing time. Yeah. So I get fired from Sillies thinking my whole life's going to end. And then one day um, the phone rings and says, this is American Hawaii Cruises. Can I speak to James? I'm like, this is me. You DJ, yeah. Da, 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 da. He's like, I would like to work on the cruise ship. I was like, what? He goes, I go, what's the deal? He goes, well, it's four months on, two months off, right. paid vacation. Um, you, you got room, you got board, you got clothing, you got food, and you'll pay $2,000 a month. I go, when do I leave? Nice. He goes, well, that's the thing. Oh. Can you be here in no. three hours? <laughs> what? Three hours? Pew! Yeah. I was gone. And my whole thing is I... I wanted to get the hell out of Hawaii by right. when I turned 18. Okay. Because, I, you know, I wanted to be this yeah, yeah. big dude or whatever, move back to the city. Anyway, so I work on the cruise ship as a DJ. I'm not going to go through all that, but I I was on it for five years. Wow. And I, I, I that's where I fell in love with Hawaii. Okay. Because we would, you know, every Saturday pick up new pick up new uh, tourists, you know, 1,500 tourists. Yeah. And we'd go to Kauai, play all day, get back on the ship, right. wake up the next day, we're in Hilo. Play all day. Get back on the ship. Wake up. We're in Kona. You know, I got to see all the islands. That is dope. That's when I fell in love with Hawaii. And I just said, you know what? We're going to make roots here. Mm. But while I'm on the ship and I would take my 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 two months off, I'd go back to Silly's. They'd hire me. So the DJ that was there, G-Man, he'd be pissed off at me. He was like, what are you doing here? I go, dude, they want me to play. I'm here I'm here for two months. He's like, dude. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to turn down this money? <laughs> Wait, they fire you, didn't hire you? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now also, can't can't cannot uh, do this uh, early hip hop thing without uh, mentioning the late great Daniel J. Mm, so yes. I heard Daniel J. On um, I don't remember what station it was. Was it I ninety four? No, it wasn't I ninety four. But it was K I K I. It just okay. wasn't called I ninety four yet. And he had a mix show on there, and I was like, "That's my mix show." In my brain, I'm thinking, "That's my mix show." Right, right, right. I like so I that. don't know what I do, but whatever I did, I did it right. But I took it. And then it became your mix show. It became my mix show. And then. What year was this when God. you got that mix show? And by the way, shout out to Daniel J. Right. Live, live a kid to Daniel, right. Daniel J. For sure. Um, I want to say maybe 80, ha, 88, 87. I don't know. So you was, got, but you got that mix show. Oh, I got it. You got it. I got it. And then what ends up happening. Are, are you still on the uh, cruise ship? Yes. Okay. Um. Then I get fired from the cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. I'm not going to get into I bet. that. You uh, about um, got nothing to do with hip hop. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, Joe Ho. Joe Ho was really good friends with this cat named Alan Oda. So Joe Ho pulls me aside one day. He says, look, man, um, my good friend Alan Oda, he's going to become the program director for this station called I-94, and he wants you to be the music director. I'm like, man, I, I, I don't know anything about being no damn music director. <laughs> I mean, he goes, oh, and it's a 9 to 5. I said, I've never had a 9 to 5 job in my life. 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., but never 9 a.m. Yeah. to 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. you, know, you know what I'm saying? Um, anyways. Wait, straight to music director. Not straight even... to music director. Wow. And I had New ne- station, straight to music and director. And I had never been up at 9 a.m. to go to, to a right. job before. And I remember going, wow, it's bright. There's a lot of people up. <laughs> this is crazy. What Anyways. y'all doing up? Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was a great thing because we got to play a lot of uh, music that um, not as much hip-hop as we would like. So you, so you open, I mean, let me say open 90, I-94, not open. But you, you know, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure if like, that's accurate. It was that's like the accurate. first crew or? But it, it was all of us. It was, you know, it was Lanai and, and it, was, it, was, it, was, it was Cool E and uh, Alan Oda and Doug Lee and myself and... Shalin Cole, Roy, wow. Roy Wild. Um, yeah, yeah, that was that Le- was that legends. was. I so said you were the music director. Yeah, I had no clue to what I was doing. <laughs> Trust the Billy. So yeah, no clue. All but... I knew was the music was coming to me yeah, first, yeah. and that's all that mattered. I, I got it. <laughs> I, got I got it. White labels, stacks and stacks. It was Christmas every day. <laughs> and back then, I mean, sheesh. because of that, talk about hip hop and my our 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 our, our vinyl junkiness. Oh, I love it. Yep. You know. I'm getting rec- records from all the labels. I'm getting, um, I'm on the Billboard whatever list. Right, I, I'm right. on all these lists. Yeah. At the height, Cavett, I don't know if you know this, I but I had 100,000 pieces of wax in my storage. 100,000. I'm down to about 30,000 now, but that's the whole other story. <laughs> I'm down 30. <laughs> I'm down 30. We can talk about that. 
Like, you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we should go into the flood that happened. That, oh, that. no, we don't need to go okay, into okay, that. Okay. Yeah, so we're, anyway, ha- we're having a happy day so right anyway, now. So anyway, you're, you're, music, you're a music director, and yeah. so you're getting all these records yeah. in, yeah. dispersing it to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any DJs at that point that was James Cole when he was 13 that you see come up at that time in I-94? You know what I mean? Yes. Joe Cortez. Yeah, that's the first name that comes to my brain. Wow. You know Joe? I don't know him personally, but I know uh, him. Um, 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 uh, what was his DJ name? Oh, he's going to be mad. Um, damn. Anyway, he's like the number one dude in Maui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a, a company called Next Level. Him and uh, he him was and like a, that young, the yeah, young, yeah, 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 young I mean, James Cole. Like, uh, he just he you, you know you you see people who have fire and desire yeah. and and who have the passion, right? And those are the cats that I like to uh, I, I gravitate to. Oh yeah, definitely. you know because they're not they're just doing it. They're not asking. They're just doing it. Because they have to. They have right. no choice but to do it. Yeah. And I always key on on that, and those are the cats that I like to... Uh, so you're on I-94, not even on-air personality. No, you're not. I would never talk. The music, never, ever talk. Mixes. I mean, that era, man, that was critical. Like, the mixes, the music. That was so much was fun. So there was no... I felt like there wasn't really no mainstream or underground. It was just hip-hop, which is music, you know? just It's just going, you know what I mean? I, I was listening to it all the time. But um, then how long did that last for you? Long time. That happened a long time. Um, now, at this point now, I'm, I'm a little older now, right? Um, I'm throwing all these parties, hip-hop parties. I'm love, I love house music, too, so right, I'm throwing yeah. all these raves. And um, What year was that? Was that you? My, my first rave I ever threw with, was with my brother Daniel J. He opened up my eyes to the whole promoting game. Right. I remember him going, we're going to throw our own party. Go, what, what, what do you mean? Because we we're going to throw a little rave. Well, we wouldn't even call it rave yet. We're right. going to throw a little house party. I remember it was at Anna Bananas, and we walked down. I was like, this place is a dump. He goes, yeah, but look, we just move these tables. Yeah. We'll put the DJ booth over there, and we'll sell some tickets. I was like, all right. And it's coined the first rave, but let's not go into that. What year was that? What year was that? 90. Maybe 89. Wow. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. 89. So it wasn't a rave. It was just house music. Yeah, it was just house. Yeah. Techno wasn't even really hitting yet. But anyway. What's your favorite um, type of house music? Oh, I like I like soulful house, soulful, mm, soulful nice. vocal house music. And you know that's what I loved about raves back in the day. You know, shout out to G Spot. He the one that put me on to raves and like gave me my own room, hip hop room. You know, back in his room. Yep. But I got through that being just like you know this militant hip hop guy. I learned about drum and bass, house, yep. all that stuff. Yep. And I appreciated it. You know, I loved it all. I loved it all. I just I still love it all. Jungle, <laughs> trance, techno. What I loved about Sillies, you know, when I when I was when I got to be the um, you know, the teen disco, that was like the birth of the hip-hop thing because we were playing all that early hip-hop, right. all the early BAM, um, you know, the, the Nucleus and all that electro-funk yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah. That was huge. It was huge, and everyone just loved it. Um, but then as we got older and we got to the to the, um, to the the adult nightclubs, I mean, that's when, you know, what, now 85, 86, so now it's starting to really take hold, you know, DMC and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Not just Sucker MC. Now yeah. it's, you know, they're crossing over and... There's so many great hip hop acts, and um, you know that was we would get in trouble, right? Because the the, the crowd would change, okay? You know, because now you know you're getting this different element inside there, and all the clubs in town were like that. We're all changed. All the sounds were starting to change to hip hop, and everyone couldn't stand it, so they would kind of abandon it. Or good story. I remember I would play my my hip hop music at Silly's, okay, and everyone's going. You know, I would play NWA, and you know, oh, I, wow. dude, I was going yeah. off. Right. And um, man's be like, sit him down. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, look around, look around, look around. Nobody's drinking. I said, yeah, they're dancing. He goes, yeah, sit them down. They get them drinking. Oh. He says, play something white. And I always remember, <laughs> I would, my go-to record was like, so what was it? Owner of a Lonely Heart oh. by Yes, or um, uh, the song is funky though, uh, or, or the Romantics. Okay, uh, okay. talking in your sleep. Yeah, um, everyone would just turn, and I would do it like abruptly, because I'd be, I had, I'd have an attitude. Yeah, yeah. Everyone just kind of, I parted the seat. Wow, and I had to keep it up. I would always have to go back and go. Can I switch it now? Yeah. No, no, no. Couple more songs. Can I switch it now? Okay, so go. People dancing and sweating wouldn't equal drink sales. I mean, is that relative at all? Or no. Yes and no. Yes I, and I, no. I I totally get it now. I mean, you know, as an older guy yeah. now and a club owner, yeah. I totally get it. Great lesson learned. Yeah. I it made me become a better DJ in 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 um in the fact of I knew how to 
rotate the floor. Mm, rotate the floor. I'll, I'm a master at rotating nice. the floor, and I'm not afraid to rotate the floor. Hey. Most DJs, yeah. once they lose no. the floor, they 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 they, they yeah. shatter. They don't know how to get them back. Oh, I, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I, I would always you know, again ego, James. So you know, if I'm the next DJ coming, where do you want me to play? I say it don't matter. You go wherever yeah. you want, bro. Because I ain't want. going nowhere that you've been. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I got you. I can mix into don't, anything. Don't even worry about it, bro. Don't even give me headphones. I Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I'm Anyways. Gonna th- I'm going to throw this in and ride this pitch. and I got you. So one day, I went over there to him. When can I switch it? He got mad. Kind of put me in a little chokehold. I'm not going to name you. I'm not going to name you. Um, <laughs> chokehold. Anyways, I was done. Yeah. So I went back. I started... Taking my needles off. Oh, there it is. And it went pure on. What time was it? Oh, no, one o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm out. Man. People are still there. You're never going to work in this town, James Coles. You're going to be blacklisted. Blah, 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 blah. Go play your memory mechanics on my house. Right, right. You're never going to work again. Not even 24 hours later, I'm the head DJ at Maharaja. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to my sister. Yeah. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to sister. Shout out to Yvonne. <laughs> Maharaja was his, it's a Maharaja whole, was it was I was not in Kansas anymore. So right. my whole life was sillies. Right. Sillies, you know, it was two, three hundred people, and that was it. And I only got to play one style of music. Yeah. I mean, I would try to play house. Yeah. They hated it. Yeah. Locals okay. hate okay. it. But when hip house came out, right. they kind of liked mm, it, you I know. Um, but it was never really caught. So when I go to Maharaja. I always remember meeting the late, great Peter Dietrich. James Coles, I've been looking for you. So let's go to the booth. And I walk into the booth. It's the size of my apartment. Wow. I'm like, oh, Jesus, Lord. <laughs> this is, I forget the Back name. then, did, did clubs have their own records? They did, right? Yeah. Because I remember when I, when I started buying yeah. a little later, yeah. I would buy records, use records, I'd be like, hey, this is from, yeah. this yeah. is from. Yeah. So clubs had their yeah. records. Most of the time. I mean, we all brought our own, right. but yeah. they yeah. also had. So we didn't have to bring as many. Yeah. Because everywhere I went, I, I rolled five, six crates deep at yeah. least. But there was, already there was already records, at least like, three, four hundred records already there. Uh, okay. And that was you know usually the head DJ's job right. Right. to maintain it yeah. you know, and, and all of that. So, so Maharaja I, popped up? Yeah, Maharaja there? popped up. That was crazy because I remember looking at the DJs. They looked at me, <laughs> and they already knew. <laughs> and that, 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 that became my house. It was, um, it was good times, bro. It was good times. But what's great about Maharaja, it was because it was international. Right. So I can play my hip-hop and my mm, R&B. Yeah. Rotate the floor, play my house music, and I'd still have a pack. So wow. all the Japanese and right, the international right. would yeah. love the dance music. I'd, I'd put them in a frenzy for 45 minutes, sit their asses yeah, down, yeah, yeah. bring the locals back right. with some Teddy Riley, okay. some, yeah. you know, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever hip-hop music we I had. Like and, uh, and, and and it was a constant rotation. That's, that is a talent, a skill that it was is beautiful. lost, I feel. It was beautiful. Because you're doing it on the fly. Like There's no BPM counter. There's no screen to look at. It's just you, turntables, and reading the crowd. And reading and, the crowd. And that is that's the, the most important thing. And that is today. I feel like a lot of DJs they don't know how to rotate the floor. I don't think they. I don't think they even know the term to rotate the floor. They know clearing the floor. But, yeah, I know some of y'all are real good at that. No, I'm playing. I'm being funny. <laughs> no, no, no. I've, I've been there, done that, still do it. But I mean, yeah, I mean, rotating the floor. Like you, you bringing it up, man. It just kind of just makes me feel like, dude, this is like a. a a term that needs to really be taught to, and, the, and, to the DJs. And you can only do it, you have to learn it in front of right. you. You can't yeah. You can't be taught. You have to be in front of it and going, okay, sit them down. Like, uh, if you tell a DJ now, okay, sit them down, they'll be like, what? Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, yeah, want, yeah. To, they just want it to keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep burning yeah, them out, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but that art of rotating the floor, which is, whew, man. But also burning them out. They Most of the cats, you know, when I tell them, most of us younger, older DJs, I mean, Working an eight-hour shift, that was normal. That was 8, oh, yeah. 8 p.m. I got off at 3.30. That yeah. was that was just normal. Even so now, yeah. Playing two hours, I mean, that's nothing. No but what I what I'm not trying to discredit anyone. <laughs> but what I loved about what I, the, the essence for me, this is just for me. What yeah. I love about DJ is I love opening the room. Mm. I like a cold room. I like zero people there. Yeah. So because I love watching the 10. 20 yeah. people come in and sit down. And I want to, no one's going to dance, yeah, but yeah. I want to see them. Am I getting some nods? Yeah, no. Nah. Am, I, am yeah. I getting some taps yeah. or anything? Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah, okay. I see them. I love okay, that. now, I love now that. In, the, in the room, now we got 50, 60 people right. inside there. All right, now, now the alcohol's taking the yeah. back. Let me see if this will get. 
I'm not trying to get everybody up, yeah. but I, I know I, I bet you I can get that person up. No, I'll play that. Yeah, 100%. And it, you know, it's yeah. just I love that part. You no, would, anybody can rock it when it's crowded. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, rock it when it's when there's fifty. You know people. what it is? Is when you when you when when you start it, and you see the heads bobbing. You're like, All right, but it's always getting that one girl. Yep. You look at that girl. What is she liking? Yep. Get her up. Yep. She grab her friend. Uh huh. Like that's exactly it's on. it. It's beautiful. Once you get those one or two girls up, it's let's done. go. It's done. Yep. And that's like, God, and like you said, it's got to be there. I got chicken skin thinking about it. It's fun. Because, you know, like, I didn't play mainstream stuff, so mine's even harder. But I had to go in my crates and figure out what can I get. You know, because if I'm opening something like a restaurant, right? Oh, you're going on at 9 o'clock. Okay, cool. Those guys aren't there to hear what I've got to play. Right, right, so right. How, but how can I make them? Yep. Right? And that's always my challenge. But it's a challenge that I feel that we loved. Yep. You know what I mean? And I like, love it. I stood... To this day, so I, I got this little gig I do every Saturday at the beach house, and I had to tell my guy, because I would come in at 11. Right. But I mean, I'm 56 years old, and I ain't trying to stay out past 11. <laughs> so I was like, I'll open. Yeah. James, you're going to open? They think yeah, you're gonna, you want the prime spot. No, I don't want no. I've had enough shine. I, you know, I don't care about none of that. Let me open. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I work 7-Eleven. I go home. Bye. That's what's up. Get got it, young go. guys. Get it, young boys. Do your thing. You said something that made me think about something. Now, you know, let's go back to the hip-hop. Oh, you said I had to play. I didn't play a lot of mainstream. Ooh, you know how much flack I used to get for that? Because a lot of my peers knew that I played on, you know, when I was yeah. playing for the team, it was all underground. Well, yeah. whatever. Yeah. What, yeah. Not even underground. Because it was, yet. I mean, yeah, it, it was, was underground, yeah, because it was, but it was, new. it was just, it was just new. So unheard of. Yeah. So when I had to go and play for the adults or say a Maharaja, yeah. James, why are you playing this shit? You know, whatever I'm playing, like a pump up the jam or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, you know, look, I got to give everybody something. You know, I'll come back with some Eric B. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <that's, laughs> but, you know, a lot of the young cats, when they see me now, I'm just such a mainstream DJ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Man, I'll put my time in. You Stop know, it. No, yeah. You know what's <laughs> funny is, like, me coming up, you know, like, coming, like, you know, a little later, and, and you know, I was that guy. I was like, James Coleman, mainstream. But then when I got to understand... What it is to be a working DJ, what it is to live off being a DJ, especially in Hawaii. In Hawaii, let's not let's not forget that. And you know, and, and then I understood what it took. Yeah, and it took compromise, but no, not discredit. And I realized I am not giving them the proper credit that they need because they came where I came from. But you got to make the moves, necessary moves, to put yourself in those situations to win and be successful in order to come back to Cavit. Let me get you a gig. You know what I mean? Back when I was coming up. But guys like you had to, came where I came from, reach the heights in order to pull everybody up. You got to do that. Or else we're all going to be down in the, the kiddie pool like, hey, yo, you know what I mean? But you came up and it's like, yo, I'm, I'm going up to the penthouse. But I got you guys. 42 years. It's crazy. Yeah. Raising my family on it. You know? I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, that's the biggest question everyone would ask me. Dang, 40 plus years, dude? Really? Love it. Love it. I said it's not just DJing, but it's like if I go back to the to the DJ school I had, you had to learn everything. Yeah. And I wanted to learn everything that DJ. It all came from being a DJ. From being a promoter, it was because I was a DJ. Right. Being a radio producer, DJ. Being a music director, DJ. So what made you want to start that school? Well, that's good. Um, was it was first called? It wasn't United DJs at first? Right? No, no. We had to come up with a cool name because right. the name was so cheesy. It was Musical Youth. Okay. It was Musical Youth. That's what I called it at first. So. After the second, you ever get confused for reggae? <laughs> yeah, all the time, but only the old cats. Right, go to right. That. Okay, there you go. That's um, so I remember I'm working at Zanzibar, and my second child's born, and I'm, I, you know, I'm coming to this point where I'm like, look, I can't stay out to two, four o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm gonna work till eleven. Look, man, I'm gonna. I, I just cut. I started. I'm gonna open, and finally, I just, you know, this ain't even right. Yeah. I'm, let me just do my radio gig. Mm. There's no more DJing for a while. Right. Let me just go raise these kids. Nice. Um, so that's what I did. I remember in 2003, I always tell everybody, 2003 is when I stopped keeping up. 2003, when the music stopped. <laughs> 2003? Oh, my God. It was. Yeah, 2003. Hey, man, it, that takes a man to do that. I, I, well, I just wanted to pull back. I had to yeah. pull back and just raise, I mean, it was you time. know. Yeah, it was time, yeah. Um, where was I going to go with that story? Um, so you started to give back to the youth? Oh, or? yeah, that's it, that's it. So... About a year or two goes by, and I'm, you know, I'm sitting there watching, you know, Bob the Builder with my kids, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And you know, a, 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 a McDonald's commercials come on, and it's all DJing. I'm like, what? What is this? <laughs> what this not? Then it? I hear a trickster for kids, and he's scratching. You know, the I'm like, oh, we're in trouble. 
I'm thinking something, we're done now. I feel you. DJing is now crossing over to the mainstream. Everyone's going to want to be a DJ, and they're going to be wanting to do it all for the wrong oh, mother gosh. reasons. <laughs> you, you know, so I was like, nah. I ha- no, I have to do something. Yeah. And I didn't know. And, and, and anyways, and this just came up to school, and then the whole 501c3 thing came up. And anything, it just kind of tut, tut, tut. And I think I actually always remembered, I always remember having a soft spot for... Um, Harry and Jeanette Weinberg's Boys and Girls Club okay, yeah, yeah, at, yeah. at um at Washington Intermediate. Right. So I just cold called this cat. His name's K- was it? Kaleo. Talk, talk about full circle. Yeah. No, no, no. And that that was that was the whole thing. That that whole full circle. So I, I remember just cold calling him. I said, hey, you know, I got this idea. You know, I got all this equipment. I, you know, just maybe teach some kids. Yeah. I, I don't want to get paid. I you know, just, just want to teach them. Well, just what do you think you're gonna do? I said, all right. He brings me into this room about the size of this and says, This is yours. I go, what? And I don't know what to, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you don't know what. I don't know what's going to expect. So we make the flyers like I'm promoting. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I don't know if anyone's going to show right. up. I think I'm working for 104.3. It was called Extreme Radio. Extreme, it, hasn't, okay. it, hasn't, it hasn't changed the power yet. Yeah. Um, and I think they gave me a little bit of push. Right. And it was a long ass long that kids wanted to sign up. And I always remember the first, the first little girl that signed up. I always remember her. Um, she became one of my best students. Um, was that DJ Betty? Exactly. Nice. Yeah, that was DJ Betty. Wow. Little, 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 she looked like a little rug rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she had it. She had it. And um, she also learned fast that mm. she wasn't going to do that. Long. Yeah. yeah. But I'm glad that, you know, um, she figured that out. So now I think she's a nurse now. And yeah, all that. she's a nurse now. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. But that's yeah, cool. that's that's why I ended up You had up a doing... bunch of DJs run through that school, though. I mean, who else came through It is there? a trip. So I'm sitting there... And I'm looking at this one guy DJing, and um, I'm like, damn, that is that? And I don't remember his real name because I go, is that? And I say his real name. Um, I was like, Mass Funk. I was like, that's my dude. <laughs> and then I, I think I'm talking to one of my friends, and another guy heard me say, he's like, it was so funny. It was like in a movie. You trying to tell me you taught. This is what he wanted to say. Right. You trying to tell me your old ass taught mass ha- mass funk how to DJ? That's what he. I know nice. that's what he wanted to say. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. when 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 um when old boy got off, and, and he was like, James, he, he's like, this guy said he taught you. He goes, yeah, yeah. And the dude was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> let me buy you some shots. <laughs> <laughs> it was the cutest thing. And that's gotta be the biggest reward, right? Like, oh no, it's an it's an unbelievable a full reward. Circle back to Washington. It's crazy. And then are you teaching DJ? Yep. Where you basically kind of. Started becoming the DJ yep. by selling those mixtapes yep. or those tapes. Those tapes. And and now what what is what is what's okay, what for you? Okay, real quick, last question. I mean, I want to talk about hip hop, future of hip hop. You've been on the radio, you've been I mean you've done it all. If you've seen it all, you've seen many artists come through. What is it that that ceiling, why can't we break that ceiling for any hip hop specific artists oh, I to make I, it? I get this question out all of the Hawaii. time. I get this question all the time. And I'm not I'm not Let's come correct. Keep it hip hop. A lot of people don't see us as we don't struggle here. You know, that's that that's that's their perception. No, yeah, you know, so they don't think they don't they don't think that we got that real, real, right, real. Yeah, yeah. And no disrespect to 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 our hip hop community. And trust me, I I, I I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Chris Styles, you know what I'm saying? Osna, you know all those the, um, IA. I mean, uh, what's that? Immerse. You know, I'm a fan. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them, it, they tried too hard, I think, to sound like somebody else. Right. You know? Um, and they just never... I think the closest, I think, that was really authentic... Yeah. Uh, um, and I don't, again, I don't mean disrespect. I might be choosing the wrong words. Right. Um, was... Um, was 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 angry the Angry Locals crew, man. I mean, you know, I mean, Osta's a beast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jonah's a beast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I will say, I think the the... the that's that's why I think. I just think they they tried whatever sound was popping. They 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 did that, and it just didn't come off as authentic. Even though it was authentic right. to them, right. but because the mainland doesn't think that we struggle, mm. they they don't they don't they're not making the connection. Yeah, you know, I thought for sure that one track that um that Jimmy and them put out, and they used that Honolulu. Yeah, 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 I yeah. thought that you know that was so good. Yeah. I was just like, that's gonna put us on the map. Yeah. 
I was so disappointed. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. It should have. It should have. It should have. It, it was, was right, so it good. It was there. It, like, it played on all the mix shows. Dude, it and was so good. It's still good. It's, still, it's, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so good. Like, it's so good. Did you know? Oh, I don't want to say this, but well, this Jimmy's episode will come out. Did you know that that's not actually the original version? No, I did not know that. Yeah, uh, Taco told me it was actually a posse cut. Wow. Yeah, with all the high state fam. Wow. Yeah. And I was like over here in the podcast, I was like, what? <laughs> what? what? And he's like, nobody heard it. Nobody heard it. So you let me hear it after. I'm like, oh my God. But that's the genius. Shout out to Tasho, size one. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Taco. Yep. They seen something and then, you know, they did the thing. And, it, and it, it, it went to heights. It went to, you know what I mean? But that's where I felt like that. I was, I told Taco this. That's the extent of where we've reached. You know what I mean? I mean you can't, this, I'm not discounting Bruno Mars, but that's a whole different thing, right? A whole different thing. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so that's what you think? You think it's the struggle? I never heard that struggle thing, yeah, which well, makes total because, sense. Because that's what it is, right? Yeah. Everyone wants that struggle and da 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 da. Right. And, but they don't never take us seriously because they, you ain't struggling in Hawaii. They don't, because they don't live here and they don't understand it. It's so, very unfortunate. So do you think when you hear it, you'll know? I thought I heard it in Honolulu. Yeah. You know, I thought I heard it a few times with a, with a bunch of the angry local stuff. I yeah. thought I heard it a few times with Chris Styles. I, you know, I don't know. Do we need. Like a team, like positioned in certain hierarchies. No, well, you or? know, I, I don't know. I, I just think everyone should just keep doing what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you just gotta follow your heart and keep doing what you're doing. You know, and, you know, yeah. We can try to be, you know, tactical and all this, and, and try to do it for this money and do it for that. But I mean, if you just, I don't know. I'm, I've always that been that cat where it's just, just do it from the heart, and eventually it's gonna come. I know nobody wants to hear that, but that's just kind of where I'm at. All right, so I mean, I was gonna tell you leave us with something, some knowledge, but was that it? You got something else in you? Uh, no, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think that the whole hip hop community as a whole, I think has 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 done a wonderful job, and um, they just got to keep on going. Um, try not to follow this new thing that's happening right now. Let's kind of skip over that and go to the next. I mean, the whole. I, uh, you know, just let's kind of skip that over and just get to something else. I don't know. But I think everyone's doing, they just got to keep on doing what they're doing. I mean, but and not a lot of the guys that I've already named, they're they're older now. So, I mean, who are the new cats? I'm not in, I'm not in those trenches anymore. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I am not in those yeah. trenches. And you know what? I threw a lot of teen parties, and I'm thinking I want to try to start throwing the teen parties again. That was kind of my market. That was kind of my lane for a long time, and that's where I was able to have my finger on the new up and coming DJs. Have my finger and uh, on the new hip hop artists uh, and give them a a, a, sh a place, a platform to shine. Um, I remember I tried to you know put Chris Styles and all the guys on at the water park one day. I think I even got Paul Wall to kind of be a headliner and just didn't go. Wow. But you know you just got to keep on going. Right. Yeah. Follow your heart. Period. That's all I can do. That's all we got. True that. <laughs> and that's it. Ala Nui Mele with DJ or James Coles. Appreciate you. Holla. Peace. <laughs> Mahalo for listening to Ala Nui Mele on TBS Hawaii. Introduction beat by Just One Ol. You can listen to Ala Nui Mele on all streaming platforms. And check us on social media at TBS Hawaii or www.tbshawaii.org. <laughs>